The First Word From the Holy Gospel according to Luke When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Messiah of God. First word, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Communion and uh, forgiveness. Who among us here have watched that movie, The Shack? Sino po ba ang nakapanood ng pelikulang yon? Taas ang kamay. Wala iilan lang. So hindi pala kayo mahilig manood ng pelikula. It is actually an adaptation from a best-selling book by Paul Young with 3 million copies. Na pinaligtas natin yung pelikulang yon. Po pwede natin balikan. Because it wrestles with the timeless and lingering question, where is God in a world so filled with unspeakable pain? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Nasaan ka o Diyos? Bakit ako ang pinarusahan mo? Bakit hindi yung mga masasamang tao? And just very quickly, what was the story all about in that movie, The Shack, o Ang Bahay Kubo? The main actor was a Mackenzie, and he lost his daughter in a camping trip na siya ay... Uh, Noong tinulungan niya ang kanyang anak na isa pang dalawa-tatlo ang kanyang anak na muntik ng malunod, nakalimutan niya, naiwanan niya yung kanyang anak na babae at doon nagsimula yung trahedya na wala yung anak na iyon at uh, ayon sa pulisya ay nirape ng isang serial killer at doon nga nangyari daw sa isang kubo doon sa may isang bundok malapit din daw doon sa kanilang uh, camping site. Bagamat hindi nila natagpuan yung katawan ng bata, naroon naman ang kanyang kasuutan na, na puno ng dugo. And so, Mackenzie, the father, was wrestling with his own guilt feelings and of course his anger towards God. Why did God allow such tragedy to happen at doon pa sa kanyang anak na babae? And I quote from towards the latter part of that book, when God asked Mac Mackenzie to forgive, he said, I don't think I can do this, Mac whispered. I want you to. Forgiveness is first for you, the forgiver, answered Papa God. To release you from something that will eat you alive, that will destroy your joy and your ability to love fully and openly. Do you think this man cares about the pain and torment you, and your torment have gone through? If anything, he feeds on that knowledge. Don't you want to cut that off? And in doing so, knows it or not, acknowledges it or not. When you choose to forgive another, you love him well. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, forgiveness helps us, the victims, more than the offender. It sets us free. It doesn't mean excusing or absolving the offender. He will ultimately be answerable to God. But at the same time, you have made that decision to move on with your life. Of course, on God's end, God has loved us immeasurably. There is no question about that. St. Augustine once said, God has loved us as if we were the only ones to love. Indeed, 
if God will have to save just the two of us in this world, he will still do it. For we are precious in his eyes. We are his children. St. John the Evangelist also said this, God has loved us first, for God is love. So in other words, if God has loved us unconditionally without questions, then we are tasked to do likewise. The most that we can do to honor God's character. If you recall that parable of the unforgiving servant, yung isang alipin na may pagkakautang doon sa hari, ayon sa aking rough estimate, based on our current uh, uh, take-home pay na minimum wage, malamang siguro more or less 25 billion ang utang niyo doon sa hari. Samantalang yung pagkakautang ng kapwa alipin ay more or less mga 100,000 pesos lamang. 25 billion ta in comparison to that of 100,000 pesos. Pero anong ginawa ng alipin na yon? Sinunggaban, no? kwinilyuhan, at pinakulong. Dahil lamang sa pagkakautang ng kapiranggot na 100,000 pesos. Samantalang ang utang niya sa Panginoon ay 25 billion pesos at siya ay pinatawad ni right off ng hari. And that tells us that there is no limit in forgiving. Kaya nung tinanong ni Pedro, ang Panginoon, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive? Seven times? At ang sagot ng Panginoon, no, 70 times, seven times. Which means, always, infinitely. There is no limit in forgiving. And so why is it important for us to forgive? Aside from the fact that it, is, it destroys our relationships, our community, one thing that we need to realize, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we live in an imperfect world. There is no such thing as a perfect relationship. We get hurt. Lahat tayo nakakaranas ng uh, uh, sagutan, di pagkakasundo, pag-aaway among us in the family, in the community, among couples, between uh, the boss and the employees in the workplace, o sa magkakaibigan, sa magkapitbahay, even among nations. Naalaala ko kapag meron, ito ay aking template na, kapag meron akong kinakasal, lagi kong binabanggit yung five C's of a happy married life. Isa doon yung communication. At sabi ko doon sa kinakasal ko, sabi ko, huwag kayong magalala. Isang bagay na may pangangako ko sa inyo, balang araw, mag-aaway din kayo. No? And uh, don't panic, relax. That's normal. Because there is no such thing as a uh, perfect relationship. But, ito yung binabanggit ko sa kanila, ito ang pinaka-catch. But, the mark of a community, the mark of a healthy relationship, and in fact, a true biblical community is not the absence of conflict and difficulties, but the presence of a reconciling spirit. The presence of a forgiving heart. You can even agree to disagree. Pupwede kayong uh, magsagutan dyan. Pupwede kayong mag-away. Pupwede kayong magtampuhan. But always with the end goal at the end of the day, just like what St. Paul said, you do not let the sun set on your problems. Learn to communicate, to dialogue, to talk things over. The proponents of a reconciling spirit. So conversely, what would the world without forgiveness be like? What would be the consequences? Apat. Apat daw ang magiging epekto kapag hindi tayo marunong magpatawad. Unang-una, if we do not learn how to forgive, we perpetuate the grief suffered within ourselves and in others. Naging katulad din daw tayo ng ating aggressor. At nakikita natin yan sa ating paligid. Kapag may issues tayo ng ating kabataan, tayo ay uh, um, sinaktan, meron tayong mga phobias, meron tayong mga unfinished business and issues when we were young, eh kailangan yan ay lalabas at lalabas kapag tayo ay malaki na. And most often, we become like them, like the abusers. In stressful situations, children adopt behavior that mimic that of their parents. Naging katulad tayo noong mga nangaabuso sa atin. And only forgiveness can break that chain reaction. 
Pangalawa, if we not learn how to forgive, we live with constant resentment. Lagi tayong galit. Siguro nakakita na tayo ng mga taong ganyan. Ultimo yung pusang tahimik na kumakain sa tabi ng daan, sinisipa. Wala namang kasalanan. No? O di kaya kalimbawa kapag ka, kaya huwag kang mag-drive kung ganoon ang iyong sitwasyon. Dahil malimit baka maging isa ka pa doon sa statistics ng road raids na makapatay ng tao dahil punong-puno ka na gusto mo nang sumabog. Pero hindi lang yon. It is in fact, when you live in constant resentment because of unforgiveness, one of the causes of psychosomatic illnesses. Psychosomatic, silent lang, tahimik, google ang tangin ka na lang. At ano ang mga iyon? Arthritis, cardiovascular diseases, heart attacks, stroke, diabetes, and eto cancer. Nung ako po ay naging isang uh, volunteer chaplain, ng uh, Makati Med noong first year ko pa lang doon ako ay naapektuhan kapag may binibinisyonan at naging mausisa so every time may binibinisyonan tanatanong ko yung doktor di kayo nurse ano ba ang cause of death no? nagiging uh, uh, ano ako chismoso kumbaga no? at laging sinasagot sa akin father cancer po para sa kanila natural lang ang sagot cancer po cancer po. pero para sa akin parang napupuno na ako dun sa sagot nila. Kaya nung makita nila na ako ay parang nasa shock sa kanilang sagot, nilapitan ako ng isang doktor na may pagkapilyo din. Sabi, Father, alam mo, sa panahon natin ngayon, kapag ka hindi ka namatay ng kanser, hindi ka in. No? Eh, sabi ko sa kanya, ikaw na lang, Dok, ang maging in. Huwag mo na akong isama dyan. No? So, it can be a cause of this kind of sickness. If we do not learn how to forgive, we remain fixated on the past. Di po ba? Kapag hindi tayo marunong magpatawad, kahit pa man, yun ay uh, pumanaw na o di sa isang sitwasyon sa ating buhay, we will have trouble living in the now. We are not going to grow. We cannot have a new project in life. We will be paralyzed. We will just increase the old pain. Our future is black and there is no new relationship. We are unable to renew our life to establish new relationships. Kaya nga may kasabihan, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and that prisoner is you. Lagi nating narinig yan, eh Father, kapag ako nagpapatawad, tingnan mo, niwala man lamang pagsisisi sa kanyang mukha. Di ba, ako ang talo dyan? Nakakainis at mas lalong uh, nakakainis kapag halimbawa gusto mo na siyang patawarin mukhang wala naman pagsisisi sa kanyang ginawa it's not about him it's about you the forgiver that you've made the decision to move on with your life to set you free and finally if you do not learn how to forgive you seek forgive you, you seek revenge gusto mo maghiganti kaya meron pang nagsabi if you want to be happy for a moment then seek revenge. Maghingat ka kung gusto mong makaisa. But if you want to be happy forever, grant forgiveness. Forgiveness alone can break the infernal cycle of, vi of vengeance, violence, and create new modes of human relationships. That's the only way to break that cycle of violence, to forgive. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, that we were created for community. And forgiveness is the indispensable ingredient of community and healthy relationships. Kaya nga tayo nagtutulungan bilang magkamag-anak, magkapatid, magkapamilya, dahil yun ang sitwasyon kung paano tayo mamuhay bilang isang alagad ng Diyos, bilang isang pamilya, mga anak ng Diyos. You are no longer foreigners and aliens but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. We are all brothers and sisters. We are not strangers to one another. And so, at this point of our reflection, maybe it is good that we need to reestablish this, my dear brothers and sisters, before we go to the other points for reflection. And that was the gospel the other day. When you go over to the Lord, 
and you, suddenly you recall that there is something that you need to settle with your brother or sister, then leave your offering on the altar. Go first, settle your issues. And that is, I think, one thing that we need to do. At this point of our life, let us remember family members or friends or neighbors who would need our own forgiveness. Our parents, maybe our father, our absent father or parents, our brother or sister, our friends who hurt us unfairly, those who work, we work with in the workplace who could be always a pain in the neck. Maybe this is the time to find and to receive the grace of forgiveness and move on with our life. To end, I would like to pick up some prayers from this book published by St. Paul's. And I think this is most appropriate for us for this reflection entitled 36 Prayers to Ask for Forgiveness by Father Hector Munoz, OP, published by St. Paul's. We close our eyes as we pray. Prayer that others reconcile with me if it is hard for me to forgive. Lord Jesus, my friend, pardon of the Father for all the world. You know how hard it is for me to forgive. You know how rational I am and how many times I made such offenses. I am vindictive and more than once than these words come up in my heart. One has to pay for this. However, you told us that we must forgive up to 70 times 7. That before the aggression, the only way to conquer violence was to offer the other cheek that we have to bless those who curse us. I know that pride intervenes to stop the possibility to ask for forgiveness, that the rest may reconcile with me, but that day will never come, and I continue to tread the evil of two warring persons who never speak to each other, the sad reality of distant friends, of long faces and hard silence of not bothering to speak. Do not let the sun of my day set without making peace with my neighbor. Do not let the sun of my day set without the far ones coming near me. Do not permit that vengeance overcomes your forgiveness that leaves and hides in me anxious to reach out. May my arrogance succumb to your humility so that I come nearer to whom I offended and ask for forgiveness so that I may come nearer to my offenders and offer them forgiveness. Amen.